Chapter Nine of *The Prodigal Village: A Christmas Tale* by Irving Bacheller. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Nine, which tells of a merry Christmas day in the little cottage of the widow Moran. Night and silence are a stern test of wisdom. For years the fun-loving Chattersome Blenkinsop had been their enemy and was not yet at peace with them but night and silence had other enemies in the village ancient and inconsolable enemies it must be said they were the cocks of bingville every morning they fell to and drove night and silence out of the place and who shall say that they did not save it from being hopelessly overwhelmed day was their victory and they knew how to achieve it noise was the thing most needed so they roused the people and called up the lights and set the griddles rattling the great white cock that roosted near the window in the widow moran's hen-house watched for the first sign of weakness in the enemy when it came he sent forth a bolt of sound that tumbled silence from his throne and shook the foundations of the great dome of night it rang over the housetops and through every street and alley in the village that started the battle silence tried in vain to recover his seat in a moment every cock in bingville was hurling bombs at him immediately darkness began to grow pale with fright seeing the fate of his ally he broke camp and fled westward soon the field was clear and every proud cock surveyed the victory with a solemn sense of large accomplishment the loud victorious trumpets sounding in the garden near the window of the shepherd awoke him that christmas morning the dawn light was on the windows merry christmas said the little round nickel clock in a cheerful tone it's time to get up is it morning the shepherd asked drowsily as he rubbed his eyes sure it's morning the little clock answered that lazy old son is late again he ought to be up and at work he's like a dishonest hired man he's apt to be slow on christmas morning said the shepherd then people blame me and say i'm too fast the little clock went on they don't know what an old shirk the sun can be i've been watching him for years and have never gone to sleep at my post after a moment of silence the little clock went on hello the old knight is getting a move on it the cocks are scaring it away santa claus has been here he brought ever so many things the midnight train stopped i wonder who came said the shepherd i guess it was the bings the clock answered just then it struck seven then i guess that's about the end of it said the little clock of what the shepherd asked of the nineteen hundred and eighteen years you know seven is the favored number in sacred history i'm sure the baby would have been born at seven my goodness there's a lot of ticking in all that time i've been going only twelve years and i'm nearly worn out some young clock will have to take my job before long these reflections of the little clock were suddenly interrupted the shepherd's mother entered with a merry greeting and turned on the lights there were many bundles lying about she came and kissed her son and began to build a fire in the little stove this'll be the merriest christmas in your life laddie boy she said as she lit the kindling a great doctor's come up with the bings to see you he says he'll have you out of doors in a little while ho ho that looks like the war was nearly over said mr bloggs mrs moran did not hear the remark of the little tin soldier so she rattled on i went over to the station to meet him last night mr blenkinsop has brought us a fine turkey we'll have a grand dinner sure we will and i asked mr blenkinsop to come in eat with us mrs moran opened the gifts and spread them on the bed there were books and paints and brushes and clothing and silver articles and needlework and a phonograph and a check from mr bing the little cottage had never seen a day so full of happiness it rang with talk and merry laughter and the music of the phonograph mr blenkinsop had come in his best mood and apparel with the dog christmas he helped mrs moran to set the table in the shepherd's room and brought up the platter with the big brown turkey on it surrounded by sweet potatoes all just out of the oven mrs moran followed with the jelly and the creamed onions and the steaming coffee pot and new celery the dog christmas growled and ran under the bed when he saw his master coming with that unfamiliar burden 
he's never seen a christmas dinner before i don't wonder he's kind of scared i ain't seen one in so long i'm scared myself said hiram blinkensop as they sat down at the table what's scaring you man said the widow afraid i wake up and find myself dreaming mr blinkensop answered nobody ever found himself dreaming at my table said mrs moran grab a carving knife and go to work man i ain't exactly used to this kind of a job but if you'll look out the window i'll have it chopped and split and corded in a minute said mr blenkinsop he got along very well with his task when they began eating he remarked i've been looking at that picture of a girl with a baby in her arms brings the water to my eyes it's so kind of lifelike and natural it's an a number one picture no mistake he pointed at a large painting on the wall it's pauline said the shepherd sure she's one of the saints of god the widow exclaimed she started a school for the children of them italians and poles she's trying to make em good americans i'll never forget that night mr blinkensop remarked if you don't forget it i'll never mend another hole in your pants the widow answered i've never blabbed a word about it to any one but mr singleton keep that in your soul man it's your ticket to paradise said the widow she goes every day to teach the poles and italians but i have her here with me always the shepherd remarked i'm glad when the morning comes so that i can see her again god bless the child we was sorry to lose her but we have the picture and the look o her with the love o god in her face said the widow moran now light your pipe and take your comfort man said the hospitable widow after the dishes were cleared away sure it's more like christmas to see a man and a pipe in the house heavens no a man in the kitchen is worse than a hole in your petticoat so mr blenkinsop sat with the shepherd while the widow went about her work with his rumpled hair clean-shaven face long nose and prominent ears he was not a handsome man this is the top notch and no mistake he remarked as he lighted his pipe blenkinsop is happy he feels like his old self he has no fault to find with anything or anybody mr blenkinsop delivered this report on the state of his feelings with a serious look in his gray eyes it kind of reminds me of the time when i used to hang up my stockin and look for the reindeer tracks in the snow on christmas morning he went on since then my old socks have been full of pain and trouble every christmas those i knit for you here left full of good wishes said the shepherd say when i put em on this morning with the biled shirt and the suit that mr bing sent me my old self came and asked me where i was going and when i said i was going to spend christmas with a respectable family he said i guess i'll go with you so here we be the old cells of the village have all been kicked out of doors said the shepherd the other day you told me about the trouble you had had with yours that night all the old cells of bingville got together down in the garden and talked and talked about their relatives so i couldn't sleep it was a kind of self-land i told judge crooker about it and he said that that was exactly what was going on in the town hall the other night at the public meeting the folks are drunk as drunk as i was in hazelmead last may said mr blenkinsop they have all been drunk with gold and pleasure the fruit of the vine a plenty said judge crooker who had just come up the stairs merry christmas he exclaimed as he shook hands mr blenkinsop you look as if you were enjoying yourself and why not when yourself has been away and just got back and you've killed the fatted turkey said the judge as he took out his silver snuff-box one by one the prodigals are returning they heard footsteps on the stairs and the merry voice of the widow moran in a moment mr and mrs bing stood in the doorway mr and mrs bing i want to make you acquainted with my very dear friend robert moran said judge crooker there were tears in the shepherd's eyes as mrs bing stooped and kissed him he looked up at the mill owner as the latter took his hand i am glad to see you said mr bing is this is this mr j patterson bing the shepherd asked his eyes wide with astonishment yes and it is my fault that you do not know me better i want to be your friend the shepherd put his handkerchief over his eyes his voice trembled when he said you have been very kind to us but i'm really hoping to do something for you mr bing assured him i've brought a great surgeon from new york who thinks he can help you he will be over to see you in the morning 
they had a half-hour's visit with the little shepherd mr bing who was a judge of good pictures said that the boy's work showed great promise and that his picture of the mother and child would bring a good price if he cared to sell it when they arose to go mr blenkinsop thanked the mill owner for his christmas suit oh don't mention it said mr bing well it mentions itself pretty middle and often mr blenkinsop laughed is there anything else i can do for you the former asked well sir to tell you the dead honest truth i've got a new ambition said mr blenkinsop i've thought of it nights a good deal i'd like to be a sextant of the church and ring the old bell we'll see what can be done about it mr bing answered with a laugh as they went downstairs with judge crooker followed by the dog christmas who scampered around them on the street with a merry growl of challenge as if the spirit of the day were in him what is it that makes the boy so appealing mr bing asked the judge he has a wonderful personality mrs bing remarked yes he has that but the thing that underlies and shines through it is his great attraction what do you call it mrs bing asked a clean and noble spirit is there any other thing in this world that in itself is really worth having compared with him i recognize that i am very poor indeed said j patterson bing you are what i would call a promising young man the judge answered if you don't get discouraged you're going to amount to something i am glad because you are in a sense the father of the great family of bingville end of chapter nine end of the prodigal village a christmas tale by irving bachelor